The state of New York's ammunition purchase restrictions, which passed in direct defiance to the Bruin decision, is now back in front of the Supreme Court for consideration. This, of course, will have huge implications for other states like California, who also have ammunition restrictions. So let's talk about what is now happening. But really quick, before we jump into this video, I wanna ask you all for a huge favor. Looking at some of my analytics, about 60% of all my viewers are actually not subscribed to the channel. So if you wanna support this channel, if you wanna help this information get out to more people, one of the best ways to do that is subscribing to the channel. One of the goals right now is to reach 700,000 subscribers. That would be really cool. But regardless, thank you to everyone who supports the channel and thank you to everyone who subscribed to the channel. As I mentioned in the intro, in this video, we will be discussing a new case which is seeking immediate Supreme Court review. This case challenges New York's concealed carry law and the ammunition requirements that it put in place through the CCIA. The case we're going to be talking about in this video is Gazzola versus Hockle. The Gazzola case focuses on the impact the CCIA specifically has on dealers and gun stores within the state of New York and the various aspects that it put in place as far as ammunition background check systems and the background checks to purchase and acquire ammunition. The businesses argue that they are a critical component to the right to keep and bear arms and that this aspect of the CCIA attempts to essentially regulate them out of existence so they can't actually help people exercise their two-way rights. And now this ammunition restriction case is back in front of the Supreme Court on an emergency basis and is heading to the Supreme Court for conference in just a couple weeks. This whole lawsuit sprung up as a result of the Supreme Court issuing that Bruin decision. In Bruin, the Supreme Court struck down New York's prior May issue CCW licensing scheme, finding that it was inconsistent with this nation's history and tradition. Now, one of the primary findings of that Bruin decision was that the government bears the burden to prove that their restrictions and their regulations are based in the history and tradition of our nation. However, despite that decision, New York then eight days later passed something known as the Concealed Carry Improvement Act or the CCIA, which actually made acquiring a concealed carry permit even harder and worse and even more restrictive than the one that was shot down in the Bruin decision. This case specifically involves how the CCIA impacts gun stores and similar dealers within the state of New York because the CCIA also put in place various restrictions like on the sale of ammunition. In this case, the plaintiffs originally sought to obtain a temporary restraining order and then also a preliminary injunction from the lower court, from the federal court. However, that lower court, that district court, rapidly denied both the TRO and then the preliminary injunction in the same order. The court issued the denial without even holding a hearing on the TRO or the preliminary injunction. The plaintiffs then submitted an interlocutory appeal up to the Second Circuit. The plaintiffs asked for the Second Circuit to find that the denial of the TRO and the preliminary injunction by that lower court was in fact an error. However, at the three-judge panel level in the Second Circuit, the Second Circuit there originally denied their appeal, saying that the court weighed the applicable factors and found that the district court was in fact correct in denying the injunction. Now, in response to that original denial, the plaintiffs submitted a petition for a writ of cert before judgment. Now, ultimately, what ended up happening there was the Supreme Court denied that writ of cert before judgment. Instead, the Supreme Court indicated that it would wait for the Second Circuit to actually hear the appeal in the Gazzola case and then rule on that appeal. And the Supreme Court was not going to step in early on a writ of cert before judgment. That's not really surprising, especially since in the other CCIA cases that already went to Supreme Court, those were also denied. And what happened there was you had a case like Antonyuk that went to Supreme Court also on emergency basis, was seeking review before the Second Circuit ruled in the Antonyuk case. Those were denied as well, but Justice Alito did say that the Second Circuit would need to expedite hearings in those cases and then rule on them. And then eventually, maybe at that time, the Supreme Court would get involved. Now, recently, all five of the CCIA cases, including the Gazzola case, were decided by the Second Circuit. The Second Circuit ended up vacating some of the district court's injunctions against the enforcement of the CCIA. For example, in the Antonyuk decision, the Second Circuit distinguished Bruin as an exceptional case. Therefore, the Second Circuit vacated much of that lower court's injunction, finding that virtually all of the CCIA was facially constitutional under the Second Amendment. Again, they use that whole exceptional circumstance kind of argument to rule in favor of the state of New York and the CCIA. In this Gazzola case, the Second Circuit upheld the lower court denial of the preliminary injunction. And currently what they're trying to do is send the case back down to the lower court for a decision on the merits. The plaintiffs and petitioners in this Gazzola case argue that that finding by the Second Circuit was incorrect, that the district court failed to properly apply all the historical analysis that was outlined in Bruin, and that both the lower court and the Second Circuit have got this wrong, and that the Supreme Court needs to step in and review this issue. 
In fact, the Gazzola petitioners pointed to Judge Benitez and his decision in the Rody California ammunition ban case, which is very similar. And they pointed to that as a proper way to apply Bruin's framework. In their petition, they argue that district court, quoting there to Judge Benitez, defined ammunition as a core Second Amendment right. Without bullets, the right to bear arms would be meaningless. The state list of 148 laws covering 535 years was found by judicial analysis to contain no historical twins and no dead ringers. Specifically, the attorney general has not identified a single historical law that required a citizen to pass a background check in order to purchase ammunition. Citizens were free in every state to buy ammunition at any time and without qualification. Herein, the state filed only four historical laws, none being an historical analog, either well-established or representative of a mandatory ammunition background check. So there again, they're quoting to the Judge Benitez Rody decision and the rejection of all these historical supports that were presented. And really just the fact that here in New York, there's only four laws that were supporting this type of ammunition background check, but really the historical analysis shows that no law in the US, no historical law dating back to 1791 would justify this type of ammunition background check system. Now, in response to this emergency petition, the state of New York responded with their typical arguments that this case is not ripe for Supreme Court intervention because there is no current circuit split on the whole constitutionality of background checks for ammunition. And they also argue that this case is still at an interlocutory posture and is essentially too early for Supreme Court intervention and just too early in the kind of procedural posture for the Supreme Court to step in. They state that moreover, this case is a poor vehicle to review the licensing, background check, and training requirements because as the Second Circuit correctly held, petitioners lack standing to challenge those provisions. Finally, this case's interlocutory posture renders the resolution of any issues premature. The court should deny certiorari while this case proceeds in the lower courts. But this case currently is heading to Supreme Court conference and that will happen on June 13th, so just in a couple weeks. The Supreme Court conference is essentially when justices get together, they consider a case, they review a case, usually get some breakdowns from their clerks, and they decide whether or not they want to grant review to a case. It only takes four justices to grant review to a case, but currently right now, the Supreme Court has shown that they have very little interest in actually getting involved in an interlocutory preliminary injunction stage like this case Gazzola currently is at. They have granted review to final merits cases like the Rahimi case, the Vanderstock case, and the Cargill case. All of those are going to be huge Second Amendment cases. Some of those deal with ATF overreach, but Rahimi is a pure Second Amendment challenge. And then Vanderstock and Cargill also deal with two-way issues. So all of those are going to be important. So in some ways, it's kind of been a give and take with Supreme Court. They have been taking some final merits cases, some big cases. But when it comes to these in-between stage cases, you know, on some bigger issues, trying to, you know, stop enforcement at an early stage, the Supreme Court has just simply been denying review. So this is one of those situations where I know a lot of New Yorkers are hoping that Supreme Court will step in early, but the Supreme Court has been staying pretty true to their traditional process of just waiting until the lower courts actually decide on the merits of a case. Uh, currently, what's going on right now is there is another case, which is the Antonio case. That's on a emergency application. Essentially, it's seeking a writ of cert. Uh, again, a preliminary injunction stage. That Antonio case will be in conference, I believe, June 6th. So it's going to be a week before the Gazzola case. Um, and since Gazzola and Antonyuk are very intertwined and they deal with the CCIA and, you know, the response after Bruin, likely what's going to happen is we will get an answer on whether or not Antonyuk will be denied or accepted. And really what happens in Antonyuk will probably dictate what also happens in Gazzola. So we're going to be watching both of these, but Antonyuk will be the first signal after that June 6th conference of what is going to also happen in Gazzola. So that's what's currently happening. Gazzola in this ammunition restriction case is in the hands of the Supreme Court. It's heading to conference. And now we're going to have to wait and see what the Supreme Court decides to do. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and comment down below and I will try to answer the best of my ability. Also, if you guys like this video, and you'd like to support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm, and it signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of two-way news. But as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and never forget this nation was built by armed scholars, and this nation will be maintained by armed scholars.